Real estate agents, does door knocking work for lead generation? It absolutely does. I closed 14 deals my very first year as a real estate agent and made over six figures. So today I'm going to give you the script that I used and the do's and don'ts with door knocking. Now, if you're not into door knocking, you can use some of the principles in this video towards other lead generation sources. That's the great thing with being a real estate agent and generating leads. Everything can work, but nothing doesn't. It's all about picking what lead source you want to go after and mastering it. Going after it, not doing five door knocks or 10, but doing 50 or doing 75 per day. And you're going to experience success like no other real estate agent. It's just all about being consistent and choosing the right lead generation path for you. So if door knocking is it, watch this video. So let's jump into door knocking and the do's and don'ts. So why did I even pick door knocking? Well, the very first week I was licensed as a real estate agent, I went into my brand new real estate company and I asked all the successful agents, hey, what are you doing for lead generation? What are you doing for lead generation? Not a single person said door knocking. They said it was too hard and it's too hot. Now, I knew to be successful and to stand out from the crowd, I wanted to do something that nobody else was doing. Let me be completely different. And with door knocking, the great thing is the marketing expense on that, zero. How much do you have to pay for leads? Zero. You're going directly to the homeowner. And a benefit is if you get a listing with a homeowner through door knocking, oftentimes they need to turn around and buy another house. So now one door knock can turn into two transactions. So that's the great thing with door knocking. But what are different things you should know going into it? I want to avoid you having to go through months and months of trial and error. I want you to hit the ground running so you can be successful and have more success and faster success than I even did. So with door knocking, what is number one rule? Research your market. I made the mistake very early on of just picking neighborhoods, going, and it was kind of like finding a needle in a haystack. And I was just hoping for that one person to say yes. Say yes to a stranger that 20 seconds ago they didn't even know existed. Agree for them to list their house with me. No, there's a better way to do it. So number one, research the neighborhoods. Look for a turnover rate of at least 6% or greater. So what does that mean? Well, if there's a neighborhood with at least 100 homes in it, in the past 12 months have at least six or more homes sold in that neighborhood. If so, put it on the list. If not, write it off. If you only have maybe one home, even if it's a multi-million dollar listing in a neighborhood that sells per year, you could have a lot of agents competing for that. The homeowner could have a relative that has a license. You just don't want to spin your wheels competing over one listing for the whole neighborhood. So find something with a 6% or greater turnover rate. Now you can use the MLS to source this. You could even use Zillow if you don't have access to the MLS yet. But just look at the past 12 months of sales. Now, the second caveat I'll add with that is go to Google Maps and pull up Street View. Look at the entrance to the neighborhood on Street View. Does it have a little sign that says no soliciting or no trespassing? If it does, take it off the list. It's not worth the headache. Some agents try to think, is there a way around that? No, just avoid it. It's not worth the headache. Trust me from experience. I door knocked a beachfront community, multi-million dollar homes, and cops were called and they just told me to leave. So it's just not worth the headache. So just avoid those type of neighborhoods. Now, should you bring anything with you? Should you bring a partner? Um, how should you dress? Well, through different uh, hours and hours of door knocking, here's what I learned. Dress. I tried the very beginning, full suit, suit, tie, name tag. And the amount of people that actually opened the door for me was very, very small. I found when I dressed professional, but down, more people answered the door. There are people that peek through the blinds or peek through the peephole. So I wanted to be professional, but not just scream salesman. So what I wore was just a little under armor and then it was a polo, almost like a, almost like a golf shirt. I had some jeans, had some my tennis shoes, that's it. And a lot of people answered the door when I looked like that. And I even tried that look versus also add a name tag. And when I removed the name tag, more people answered the door. Now, should you bring a partner? Well, if you're worried about safety, go ahead and bring a tag team member, maybe a spouse that's licensed or another agent in your office. That's completely okay. It also keeps you motivated. You can say, hey, I'll get this side of the street. You get that side of the street. And you guys meet up after every single door knock, just check in, make sure you're good to go. And you can motivate each other to, hey, let's get through this street together today. That's an awesome way to stay safe and stay motivated. Now, should you bring anything? When I very first started in door knocking, I just brought my phone. I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I knew if I overcomplicate it, I just wouldn't do it. But the script I'm going to share with you today, I want you to actually print something out. Now, what I recommend printing out is just a piece of paper. Now, on this piece of paper, you're going to have a CMA of the neighborhood. What's active, what's pending, what's sold. You can also create kind of a cover sheet if you want. You can put different testimonials about yourself, what makes you different. And then you can put your business card on the top. So that way you kind of have something of value to give to a homeowner. Now, the most important thing is a mindset about door knocking. The best way to have a higher conversion rate is to lower the ask. Don't go for the listing. 
Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but hear me out. When you go to doorknob, when I went for the, the listing, hey, do you want to sell your house? The amount of people that said yes was so minuscule. I had to door knock hundreds and hundreds of homes to find that one person that was ready to go right now and agree to work with a stranger. Instead, we know as real estate agents, 98% of sales come through follow-up. So instead, when we change it to, you know what, when I go door knocking, the only objective for me right now is to get an email. And then if you get the email, get a phone number, but get contact information. That way we can establish trust. They can get to know us. We can provide value. And if 98% of sales come through follow-up anyways, the likelihood of somebody trying to sell right now and agree to work with you is so minuscule. Let me just get an email. That conversion rate was multiples higher. So go for the email. That's it. And it also takes a lot of pressure off your shoulders. If you're like, hey, I just got to get an email versus like, man, I really need a sale. I need to go for the listing right now. Just lower the ask. And when you're bringing your thing of value, you're going to exchange, hey, here's a CMA of the neighborhood. I can do this for you once a month and I can send it to you via email. You've now given them something of value. So exchanging for an email is very equal versus, hey, I'll give you this. Now, do you want to sell your house? That's an extreme differential in value. So let's try to match that up. Now, the approach. The hardest thing about door knocking is just getting in the car and going. Very similar to working out. If you're at the gym, you're much more likely to start picking up weights, getting on the treadmill, but it's the action itself of just going, just being in that environment. So the first day, if you're brand new to this, I would just recommend a win for you mentally is I got in the car, I drove to the neighborhood I'm supposed to go to, and I parked. That's a win. Now day two, we'll get out, and we need to know what to say, and that's where the script comes into play. So as you're walking up to the house, what I'm looking for as well is any stickers that say no soliciting, no trespassing, individual stickers on the door, on a window. If it has that, I'm just skipping it, not worth the headache. Next. Now, as I'm approaching, I'm looking for, do, do they have a doorbell? If they don't, it's an easy knock. Now, if they have a doorbell, is it a smart doorbell? If it's a smart doorbell, I usually skip those and just knock. Because when you ring a smart doorbell, like a ring doorbell, the camera will pull up and you'll show up and that will lower the amount of people that you'll get to talk to because they'll just see, hey, I don't know this person, I'm not going to answer the door. So I would knock in that case. If it's just a regular doorbell, ring that, it's louder than a knock. Now, when I knock on the door, step away five to six feet from the door. So step back. And when you step back, also turn a little bit to the side. You're creating a smaller profile for yourself versus if I'm square with somebody, it's a little bit more of an intimidating stance. So I want to turn a little bit to the side and keep my hands visible. That's very important. They don't know you. Uh, think about answering the door for a stranger. If their hands are behind their back, if they're in their pockets, if they're kind of messing around, you're like, what are they doing? So keep your hands eye level or like somewhere they can see. So if you have your piece of paper, you have your content, just hold that. That way they can see, hey, they're not a threat. Yes, they're a stranger, but let me see what's going on. Now, when they answer the door, here's the script. I want to get into this. I'm going to run through it, kind of break it down, and then I'm just going to uh, say it all together a little bit more smooth. Now, I have my CMA. I have the market sheet. I have my business card stapled on top. Here's the script. Now, I'm going to look at it a little bit because I'm one taking this video. So, hey, my name is Zach. I'm a local realtor. I'll just stop by real quick to bring you this market snapshot. Here you go. And I was just wondering, is there anything I could do for you, either now or in the future? That's it. Start with that. Is there anything I can do for you now or in the future? And just let them talk. Nine times out of 10, they just say, oh, I'm not interested. I don't want to do anything right now. And just say, hey, I completely understand. But I was just wondering, if you ever decide to make a move, do you have a go-to real estate agent? Or do you have anybody that's sending you the market content or uh, the neighborhood stats of what's going on every month? Most of the time they say no. Then you say, well, you know what? I really don't mind. I'd love to just keep you informed once a month. That's it. What's a good email for you? And you stare down and you get the email. Once you get the email, then say, all right, and a good phone number. So now we have gotten their contact information. You can always finish with, you know, how long have you lived here now? Six years. Awesome. I'm just curious. Have you ever considered making a move? And then they can say yes or no. And if they say no, just say, hey, no worries at all. I really appreciate your time. I'm going to head out. Thank you so much. That's it. So it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be this high pressure situation. It doesn't have to be, I'm going for the clothes, all or nothing. Just get the email. That's it. So let me run through it one more time. Hey, I'm Zach. I'm a local realtor. Don't worry. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I was actually just stopping by real quick with these market statistics in your neighborhood. Here you go. And I was just wondering, you know, is there anything I can do for you either now or in the future? No. Hey, I totally understand. I'm just curious. If you were to ever make a move, do you have a go-to real estate agent or do you have anybody that can send you that type of neighborhood statistics every single month? No. Hey, what's a good email for you? I'd love to keep you up to date. And a good phone number. That's it. 
That's the script. That's what closed 14 homes for me in my very first year as a real estate agent. Now, I picked this up several years ago. I was really trying to find who, was, who it was that created kind of that framework, but it works wonders. So door knocking does work. It's all about how many homes you hit and continuously being consistent with it, just like any sort of lead generation. It's about reaching out to new people, gathering contact information, and following up. 98% of sales come through follow-up. When I very first got started door knocking, I went for a neighborhood I found in Florida that was a 20% turnover rate. It was a first-time home buyer neighborhood, so that means it was entry-level price points. So as soon as those homes were listed, they would sell. And what I loved about the higher turnover rate, being 20%, is even if 20 of those homes sold in a year, and I did 50%, of things wrong. I didn't follow up. I didn't door knock them again. I never followed up. That would give me still 10 opportunities. And those other 10, hey, you could have a relative that's an agent. You could just do for sale by owner. You could change your mind. That's okay. I still have 10 shots. So find the right not neighborhood through researching, dress the right way, and use this script, exchange value. Bring something of value and change it for an email and follow up, and you can take your real estate business to the next level.